Hello and welcome to part 14 of the series on how to create a chess game with ReactJS. In this part we are going to work on attacking with the bishop. In the last part we added the movement of the bishop. The thing is, if we move our bishop on our pawn, it is an illegal move. Well, that's okay. But what if we move our bishop on an opponent pawn? That should not be an illegal move. That is what we are going to work on in this video. To start off we are going to open up our code. And right here we are going to open up our referee. And we are going to scroll down to the bishop logic and we are going to work on the upright movement. So the reason why we get an illegal movement is because we see right here that we check if our position is upright, which is this if statement. And then right here we are checking if our tile that we are moving to is occupied. And that's okay because if we refresh it and we want to move here, it will complain because this pawn right here is blocking our path. If we move to here, that's also good because we cannot move onto our own pawn. But what if we want to move to here? Well, the tile is occupied, that's true, but it is occupied by an enemy pawn. That should not be a problem. This comes with another problem and that is the following problem. If you want, you can pause the video to try to come up with the problem yourself. The problem is that when we move our pawn or our enemy pawn, which is this one, to here, and we move our pawn to here, the bishop is free and the enemy pawn is attackable. This should be possible. It says it's an illegal move. But this should not be possible. So, when we are attacking, we only want to check if the tile where we are moving to has an enemy pawn on it, not the tiles in between. So right here, if you move to here, this tile is in between, so this move is just illegal, it's not, it's not possible. Only the tile where we move to should be legal. To get a better idea, let's add some logging to our code. Right here, we have our upright movement, and right here we have our best position. Let's add a console log, which says best position, and then we want to log our x value which will be best position at x and our y value which will be best position dot y let's add a semicolon let's save it up and refresh the page and if everything's working right we should see our best positions and if we drop our bishop right here we should see best position 3 comma 1 which is this pawn right here if we were to move it away and move it to here we see that we have more best positions which are actually all the squares that we are uh, passing and the square that we are landing on. Now, one thing is remarkable about this, and that is that our best position can be the same as our desired position. So let's add some additional logging. And we are going to say desired position. We're going to say desired position dot X. And right here, we want to say desired position dot Y. Well, you might already know why our best position can be the desired position. If we move it to here, our best position will be 3 comma 1. But what will our desired position be? I think also 3 comma 1. And it's true. What if we move this here and we move our bishop to here? Our best position will contain three different positions. Those will be 3 comma 1, 4 comma 2 and 5 comma 3. Well, what is our desired position you will already guessed it it's 5 comma 3 as you can see the desired position is always the same as the last best position so let's refresh the page and let's move it to here we get a different best position and a different desired position that is because it doesn't look further when it is finding a block in its path and right here well the desired position is behind the pawn so that one cannot be reached this is a little exception. But the most important thing is we now know when our best position is the final position. How do we know that? We know that if we compare the two and we see that they are equal. When are they equal? When the past position has the same x value and the same y value. Let's open up our code right here. And let's say if past position that x is equal to 
desired position at x and past position at y is equal to desired position at y and let's write console.log we got the same past and desired positions save it up refresh the page right now we don't see any same desired and past positions but if we move this here and this one to here we see that we get the same past and desired positions that is because well as you can already see in the logging 5.3 is equal to 5.3 we are now going to remove the logging from here and we now actually have what we have right here so we can grab the return true from here remove this statement and move true instead of here save it up refresh the page and it should be working just as usual as you can see it's still working but what we do have now is we have better control over the last position as you can see we actually are uh, moving on top of another piece well uh, that's actually not possible but the reason why that is happening is because we are first checking if the past position is equal to the desired position and then we are checking if the tile is occupied so for the last position we first check if it is our last position is this our last position yes then move it after we move it we are checking for the occupied tile so actually we want to check if the tile is occupied before that is happening so let's move that before here like so and now we should have the same situation as we had before where we cannot move onto other pawns and also not onto enemy pawns same goes for the opponent pawns they cannot or the opponent bishops they cannot move onto their own pieces and also not on our pieces so how do we know if we are moving onto an enemy piece well here we check if the tile is occupied if we know that it is occupied let's check if the tile is occupied by opponent let's see that is this one if tile is occupied by opponent and then we want to check for the pass position we want to pass in the board state and we want to pass in our team let's say console.log we can advance and attack like so we are going to add this in the else right here going to explain it in a second we're going to move it side of here like so and then we are going to add this break instead of here as well and I'll actually move the console log to here because otherwise it won't reach it okay so let's explain what this does we have our tiles occupied we check if past tile is occupied then right here if the tile is occupied then we check is it occupied by the opponent question mark if it is we can advance an attack if it is not it is an illegal move actually this code is not really complete because now it will check every tile in between the desired tile and the starting tile so to get an idea of that let's move this one here this one here and this one behind here we see that we can advance an attack that is not completely true because we only want to attack when we are on our destination tile so right here we only want to check if the tile is occupied by a component or by an opponent sorry if the past position that x is equal actually just the statement right here only then we want to check if a tile is occupied by a component else it should just be an illegal move let's save it up and let's refresh the page right now if we have the same situation we move that to here we see that we have an illegal move but if we move on top of the pawn we advance an attack we got the same pass and desired positions nice so now as you can see 
we can move to the upright corner and we can actually start grabbing pieces but we can only do that for the upright corner because we haven't implemented it for the bottom left the bottom right and the top left corners yet so let's start adding it to those corners or those directions as well before we do that let's remove the we can't advance an attack and let's return true and then right here we want to remove this logging and let's see do we still want the little move let's just leave it like so and before we are going to implement it at the other directions we are first going to clean up this code and we are going to write it a little bit better if you want you can pause the video to come up with a better solution than this the solution that we are going to implement is the following solution we are going to remove this because this is actually duplicate with what's below there as you can see when we select it it's exactly the same as right here so let's remove this and let's add it to up here we first check if the tile where we are moving to is the final tile so let's check check if the tile is the destination tile if it is not the destination tile then we are dealing with a passing tile dealing with passing tile and if it is we are dealing with destination tile so what do we want to do if we are having a passing tile we just want to check if it is occupied by an opponent or not by an opponent that doesn't matter it's just checking if it is occupied and if it is we just want to break it like so then when we are on our destination tile we want to check if the tile is occupied by an opponent or if it is empty so right here if this tile is occupied empty or occupied by opponent then we want to return true so we here we give in the pass position we want to give in the board state and we want to give in our team like so and then we want to return true not transformers true like so we then want to remove this like so and then we can actually also remove this right here let's save it up and check if this still works for the upper right movement refresh the page we cannot do that we cannot do that we can we can and i accidentally zoomed in we can still let's move this one here we can nice what if we move this one here we cannot nice okay so now we have the moving and the attacking for the upper right direction working let's implement this for bottom right bottom left and top left as well here we check if the pass position is equal to the desired position and then we are going to deal with the destination tile just like we did right there and then when the tile is empty or occupied by an opponent we want to return true otherwise we want to return uh, or we actually don't want to return anything we just want to break and we actually want to move this inside of here so we, let me just grab this put it right here and we can remove this one from here nice let's save this up we should have the bottom right movement working as well let's refresh the page move it to here we cannot move to the bottom right that's correct now we can nice if we move our bishop to here and the knight to here we should not be able to do this and we can take the knight okay now we have the bottom right movement down as well and one thing you might notice is when we select this well actually nothing is happening let's see if we select this no okay so the thing is this piece of code right here is exactly the same as this piece of code right here so for now we are, can just copy this over and paste it into here and we paste it underneath the best position like so 
And then we are going to do the same for the top left movement. We can remove that. And we can put this underneath the pass position, like so. Let's save it up. And if we now refresh our page and try to move the black bishop out of here, we cannot. Let's make some space for it. Move it to here. We can. Let's test if we can move onto our pawns. We cannot. Also not with the white bishop. Let's try moving our pawn to here. Will it attack? Will it attack this pawn? That's a nice question. Should it? Is it able to attack this pawn or is it being blocked by that one? As you can see, it's being blocked. If we take it, it takes, takes, takes. If we move back and let's see, we take, we take. And as you can see, we actually have the movement of the bishop quite nicely down. Yeah, I think we have wrapped up the movement and the attacking logic of the bishop. Let's try one last thing, attacking that one, attacking that one. Let's refresh the page and check to see if the pawn is also attacking correctly. Let's see if we take that. It's working nicely. We also should have a horse which can attack. Let's see, we can move our horse to here, to here, here. Let's see, we can move it down here. This pawn up here. It's a little bit complicated. Yes, we can take it. Nice. Okay. Really good job. I hope you could follow along. In the next episode, we are going to work on the movement of the rooks. I want to thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.